In this video I'm going to be looking at how low a shutter speed I can hand hold a camera and still get sharp pictures. The idea for this video came about because someone commented on one of my previous YouTube videos asking how low a shutter speed I can safely hand hold the Olympus. So that's what I'm doing here. When I first started photography 30 odd years ago in the days of slide film there was a general rule of thumb that you could only hand hold safely and get sharp pictures, uh, camera and lens at the equivalent focal length of what you were using. What this meant was that if you say using a 60mm lens, if you shot below a 60th of a second you're going to get camera shake. Nowadays with modern day cameras that rule of thumb has really gone out the window and now you can shoot with modern day cameras at quite low shutter speeds handheld and still get sharp pictures. And in this video I'm going to be testing that out. So it's the beginning of February and the subject that I'm going to be photographing today is scarlet elf cap fungus. Normally speaking the ideal time for fungi season is usually around September, October, beginning of November. That's when the vast majority of them will be out. But you do get fungi coming up throughout the year and certainly around about the end of January, beginning of February, scarlet elf caps will come out. And this particular wood, which is local to me, has quite a few. I found quite a nice clump behind me and what I'll be doing is photographing them. The advantage is that there's going to be no subject movement. They're low down on the ground, there's no wind or anything, so any camera shake or any movement of the subject is going to be through, through me hand holding the camera. So the camera that I'm going to be using for this is the EM1 Mark III. It's, I'll also be using the 12 to 40 mil 2.8 lens and I'll be using it at 80 mil. The fungi are not particularly small. Um, I could use the 60mm macro lens quite easily and I might actually try that, but this will be fine for that. And I expect to be able to go down to quite low shutter speeds. I show in, later on in the video pictures that I've taken with the Olympus at quite low shutter speeds handheld just to see what we can get. So I've had a good look round and this is probably the nicest little grouping that I've found in quite a reasonable position. Although it's okay as it is, it could actually be improved with a little bit of gardening and some purists will say you shouldn't actually garden pictures but providing you don't disturb the subject I think just tarting it up and taking any little distractions out. Here you've got this bit of grass here which is really in the way which can be easily pulled out of the way. You've also got those leaves in the background which I'll do something about but it actually does help it actually sort of get the picture as right as you can with just a little bit of tidying up at the taking stage. So you can see here in this picture that I've actually tidied the picture up quite a bit. I've taken the distracting leaves in the background and put some sort of more moss in there, took away any of the little bits of twig that were in the way and now it's ready for taking the pictures. So I found this little grouping here on this mossy covered tree stump and it's actually pictorially quite nice. There's four of them there, there's actually five there on the outside but that won't be in the picture. Certainly with the 40mm end of this 12 to 40 I can get that all in quite easily. I don't really need a macro lens for this. This is a pro lens so you've got image stabilising in the lens and the camera body. So you've got about seven and a half stops of image stabilising there. What I'm going to do is compose it and I'm actually going to look at the screen, the flip out screen, very very useful. What I've actually got it done is I've got it set to continual autofocus. Although it's not moving I might be slightly moving myself so I might be just very very slowly just going in and out without realising it. With continual autofocus any slight movement that I make it will stay in focus and that's a big advantage. So I'll take all the pictures that I want for this exercise. I've got 60th, 2nd, 30th, 15th, 8th, you know, all the way down until I can't really take hand hold it any lower. Now having taken all the pictures that I need, I now have the problem of getting up again. I'm nearly 70 
getting up and down is really quite a problem these days, especially I've had a knee replacement. But we'll see how we get on. You might laugh, all you youngsters might find it quite funny, but I can assure you when you get to my age, it won't be quite so funny. Ooh. So here I'll show the results obtained using the 12 to 40 mm lens. You have to bear in mind that these were in effect close up macro shots taken handheld. All the images taken at 30th, 15th and 8th of a second were sharp. At a quarter of a second I took a series of six shots and out of these three were sharp although the other three showed some slight evidence of camera shake. Although you will get sharp images at a quarter of a second you need to take a few extra frames to ensure you obtain some frames that are critically sharp. At half a second again I took six shots and here the images were starting to show some slight evidence of camera shake. At one second, all six shots showed evidence of camera shake. So here I found a nice little group that I'm going to photograph with the 60mm macro lens. I'll do the same test, it'll be 60th of a second, 30th of a second, 15th, 8th, quarter, half and then a full second. A full second I'm probably going to get sh camera shake, I may even at half a second, but certainly at, at some of the other settings I should be okay. I'm going to take more than one picture. Certainly once you start getting down to the lower shutter speeds, you're not just to take one, you need to take four or five and then go through them, pick the sharpest one out. So we'll see how we get on. Once again, 30th of a second, 15th of a second, 8th of a second and quarter second are all fine showing sharp results. At half a second camera shake is starting to show and it is definitely evident at one second. So now I'm going to show some landscape seascape pictures where I'm using the 12mm end of the 12 to 40 mil. In these shots I found I could shoot at half a second handheld and still get sharp results. The first three pictures were taken on a holiday in Cornwall using the in-camera ND filters on the EM1 Mark III. As these results show, at 12mm end of the zoom, it's possible to get sharp handheld images even as low as half a second. This shot was taken at a quarter of a second, and I took a series of about 8 or 9 pictures. All of them were pin sharp at a quarter of a second. The next two pictures are slow shutter speed shots of waterfalls. The first was taken at Buttermere in the Lake District and the second at Padley Gorge in the Peak District. Here again using the wider end of the zoom allowed me to get a series of sharp handheld images at half a second. This picture of the Dipper was the most challenging and was taken handheld using the EM1 Mark III, the 300mm f4 Pro plus the MC14 converter. This gave me, in effect, a focal length of 420mm. Hand holding this camera lens combination at high shutter speeds is not a problem, but it was quite a challenge hand holding it at this focal length at 15th of a second. With the dipper I also had the problem of subject movement. Dippers do not sit and pose for you like some birds and they constantly bob up and down. Here I had to take a whole series of shots to ensure that I could obtain one image where the bird is pinned sharp. With the image stabilising on the Olympus it is possible to shoot at amazingly slow shutter speeds handheld and still get sharp images. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Please check out my other YouTube videos and hit the subscribe button to be notified of future uploads. Thanks for watching.